Around and around we go. The Big 12, the Pac-12. What's the latest? What are we hearing about the Big 12 expansion? What's the Pac-12 doing with their media rights? And let's also look at some BYU sports and how they did this past weekend. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. You guys are absolutely fantastic. All your support means the absolute world to me. Uh, big thank you once again to the Locked On Podcast Network for being our I guess, sponsoring institution in a way. Very proud to be part of the network. And of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. The goal here, simply stated, is to make you guys the smartest BYU fans in the room by giving you all the news and notes you guys need to know about to be able to go out and sound, like I said, like the smartest Cougar fan in the room. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And of course, we are still tracking everything going on with the Pac-12 media, right? What does that entail with regards to the Big 12 and possible expansion? Uh, Brett Yormark, the Big 12 commissioner, apparently has been very, very adamant about wanting to get into the fourth uh, window in terms of TV window uh, to expand the conference for the Big 12 nationwide. Does that mean that the, the Pac-12 has to be the target for the Big 12? Not necessarily, but I think the bigger storyline here is that the longer this plays out with regards to different stories popping up regarding the Pac-12 media rights, we saw from the New York Post and Andrew Marchand uh, just yesterday that Apple TV is apparently the latest rumored potential destination for the Pac-12 media rights, but according to that report, if the Pac-12 does decide to get into bed with Apple TV or Apple Apple TV Plus is what I should say, the streaming service. It would entail more of what MLS, Major League Soccer, has done where they get, they get the whole thing. You are sponsored and you are paid for and you get to have all of your stuff via streaming if you're a Pac-12 fan. Now, I'm not going to say that's the death knell for the Pac-12, but if that's ultimately what uh, they're going to go for, they're going to go all in, get in bed on the full streaming side of things with Apple TV. And trust me, I'm an Apple TV Plus subscriber. I love me some Ted Lasso. I obviously be watching Major League Soccer because I'm a big RSL fan, Real Salt Lake. But let me be also be very clear. If you are going to cut yourselves off, you're going to cut yourself off of the knees from linear TV, ESPN, whatever other TV platform out there may have just the cursory interest in your conference as the Pac-12. Going all in on streaming at this juncture just feels like an absolute nail in the coffin for that conference. And I've got good friends who are Utah fans, who are fans of different schools in the Pac-12. And I'm seeing tweets from media members in Arizona. Uh, uh, one, uh, James Crepia up there from the Oregonian, who actually covers the Pac-12 as well as Oregon Ducks football. And he's saying that if you're going to think about 2024 with regards to the SEC on ABC or uh, ESPN, you've got the Big Ten on Fox and or CBS. Then you've got the Big 12 and the ACC taking spots, whether it's uh, with Fox and or ESPN networks, wherever they might land and then you're thinking about hey uh the pac-12 they're going to be on apple tv and the streaming service right now according to most reports uh, that i saw at least looking up i googled how many homes apple tv or apple tv plus is in 25 million well that is just a fraction and a small fraction at that of the adult population in the united states of america now obviously if you were to go in on that you'd have a, more people subscribing because they want to watch their teams but still it seems like just an absolutely horrendous decision if you're the Pac-12. Do I think the Pac-12 is going to go wholesale into a streaming partner when it comes to that? I don't think so. I think they will try and keep ESPN in the loop and try to keep at least some of their games, maybe their top game or games, on the linear networks with ESPN's family of networks. But still, right now, it, the more and more this plays out. If you're a BYU fan who's watching the Big 12, who kind of swooped in, scooped up their deal, got $31.6 million in annual media rights starting in 2025. That's not including uh, both bowl revenue, uh, NCAA tournament payouts, also any other uh, revenue that comes into the conference from whatever means. You're the, you you got to be sitting there thinking, wow, 
we are in a lot more advantageous spot than we could have ever hoped to have been just a little while ago. And there are a lot of Pac-12 fans who are very, very, um, how do I say this kindly? They're very over the top with regards to their quote unquote self-assuredness that George Klyovkov is going to pull something out of his, you know what, and figure it out. That just right now, everything that I'm looking at with regards to the current uh, state of affairs for media rights screams that the PAC 12 may have slow played this just a tad bit too long. Now I, I had a conversation with somebody uh, that brought the point that maybe the PAC 12 should sit back and actually uh, disengage from media rights negotiations at this juncture, let things cool off a little bit and then re-engage maybe later on in the summer on into the next football season, speaking of this fall, and then hopefully have something in place by the time the media rights for their conference, which end next year, are going to expire. Then you maybe can reset some things, figure some things out. But just right now, we're, we've got a recession looming out there across the country. We're seeing the tech sphere in particular uh, having all kinds of cuts with regards to jobs, and it's not necessarily like the the, the, the bottom's going to fall out on the Pac-12, but they're being sold something from their commissioner, or at least their the, the, the leadership group, it feels like, from that side of things that may not ultimately actually be there. And a guy like Brett Yormark, if you're the Big 12 commissioner, he's been very adamant that he is going to be aggressive in pursuing expansion. Does that mean he's going to scoop up the Arizona schools? Does that mean he goes after the what they call the Four Corner schools, which I still think is the stupidest name out there? But regardless, is he going to go and uh, just kind of kneecap uh, the Pac-12 by scooping up San Diego State and considering SMU but or get Gonzaga? Or do you go and try and poach the big fish in Oregon or Washington? He's got a myriad of different options, and I'm sure he's just laying out different scenarios of how things might play out on his end with regards to the Big 12. But it's very, very clear that Brett Yormark remains very much in expansion mode, and he's expansion-minded because he wants to the Big 12. 12 to be a nationwide cost is that going to entail a lot more travel for programs like BYU absolutely you'll be sending teams to Orlando to Morgantown West Virginia you're going to be sending them all over the country but we all know what pays the bills it's football and the more homes the more eyeballs the overall uh just grand scheme of being seen on a national stage is going to equal more money down the road for the Big 12. And the other thing about this is Brett Yormark did a short-term deal. The media rights will come back up in 2031, if I have my math correct, six years from 2025 to 2031. The Big 12 will be able to re-engage with its market partners, whether it's ESPN and Fox at this point, or if uh, streaming finally does take off at that point, like some prognosticate it will. Well, guess what? At that point, you can reset the market once again. And hopefully at that point, by the way, BYU and the rest of the Big 12, as constituted without Texas and Oklahoma, will have proven themselves to be a viable TV product and attractive TV product for all of these buyers out there, potentially. Whether Amazon, Apple, a uh, myriad of other streaming platforms that could pop up between now and then pop back up. Well, guess what? Suddenly, you might be swimming in a lot more cash if you can go out and prove yourselves. But there's, there is so much going on with this. But I guess my overall message to you as a Cougar fan right now is thank your lucky stars that the Big 12 essentially has set itself up for the foreseeable future. Whereas the Pac-12, man, it sure feels like in some ways the rats are fleeing the, the, the ship and they're trying to find any which way they can get off that sinking ship. Now, I'm not saying that the Pac-12 is necessarily going to sink. I don't actually... Personally, I don't think the Pac-12 disbands or falls apart completely, at least at this juncture. But the longer this wears on and the more and more reports we hear and more media members who speak out on this, the, the sources say it, blah, 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 all, all that pops up. The more that, that plays out, well, you can guarantee there's more and more eyeballs kind of being looking elsewhere, kind of saying, hmm, What's that option over there? Well, maybe we should be looking into this a little bit more. That that stuff's going to happen. It has to happen. You wouldn't be uh, doing your due diligence if you're an athletic director for a Pac-12 school, an AD, a chancellor, a university president, whatever it might be in a leadership position, to not at least consider all options should the option that you're currently sailing with, speaking of the Pac-12, not work out. But crazy, crazy stuff happening. And it just feels like the longer this drags on, uh, the more concerned I would be if I was a big, tw uh, not big 12, a Pac-12 uh, school, a fan of one of those programs, because it sure looks like the big 12 is a lot more stable, and a lot more set to maybe be the number three, maybe the at the worst, a fourth of a power five uh, conference out there. They'll be battling, obviously, with the ACC, but it sure looks like things are a lot 
there's a lot of calmer seas with regards to the Big 12 right now. I guess my overall takeaway. All right, coming up next, we got two football notes to continue to look at. Uh, I want to look back. Obviously, we continue our look back at all the games BYU played in, in Independence. Uh, we look at a game that probably got lost in the weeds a little bit because it's not necessarily a memorable opponent uh, amidst a run of some pretty legendary games of BYU's Independent Run. We'll talk about that. And also, we had two former Cougars playing in the professional w- ranks this past weekend. How did they perform as the XFL kicked off to actually a pretty good good with a pretty good product we'll get to all of that in just a moment first a word on our friends over at built bar of course we've talked about built bar for many many years here on the locked on cougars podcast they've been a huge partner of ours here on the locked on podcast network as a whole the best part is if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories then you've got to try a built bar the best part about these they are healthy for you guys you will not believe how healthy they are for you as compared to how tasty they are first off they're covered in 100% chocolate you wouldn't you won't believe like i said the macros on these things being covered in 100% chocolate but it's legit you have 130 to 160 calories depending on the bar four to six grams of sugar with a whopping 17 or 18 grams of protein packed into each one of these bars they're absolutely phenomenal i would encourage you guys to give them a shot the best part is they continue to have a deal with byu uh, there's been some rumors out there uh, everything i hear is that built is still locked in with the byu football program so you can support built bar by going online to their website but if you need to get your built bars now you want them in hand right now the best part is they have entered the local market space you can go to your local smith's and or sam's club and pick them up today they got four bar packs available at Smith's today. If you want them in bulk, go get a 13 bar pack from your local Sam's Club. A uh, little birdie told me that uh, Costco may also have them. So keep an eye out if you're a Costco shopper as well. But once again, if you want to go to built.com, you don't mind waiting, you can save 15% by using the promo code locked on 15 at built.com. Once again, that's built bar, available at your local Smith's and or Sam's Club or at built.com. Get and join the best tasting protein bars and do it with our friends at Built Bar. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Be Wearables. It's snowing in Utah, major winter storm coming in overnight. As I record this podcast, it's actually kind of blowing outside my house. You see this shirt I'm wearing. It says, uh, caution, trees don't move. Well, that shirt is actually a really funny sign that came from a ski resort, if I'm not mistaken from Colorado. Now, what I want to talk about Be Wearables is BYU is a global fan base. Many of you have lived in different countries. I, for example, served an LDS mission, a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Taiwan. Trust me, I saw my fair share of really funny uh, road signs. Bewearables.co, it's Beware and Wearables mashed together, has collected real signs from around the world that are just funny. That's the best part about this. And they turn them into shirts. They also can put them on high quality t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, tote bags, and more. They want to help you guys celebrate kind of the funny things in life. That's what I love about this. They have uh, de- de- hilarious designs from the travels all over the world, from Iceland to Southeast Asia to Brazil and more. Like I said, this one's a little closer to home than the one I'm wearing on today's show from Colorado, but it felt right with the snow because any of you who have snowboarded or skied know that trees do not move and you run into them, they can hurt. Best part is BeWearables.co sells all their shirts through Amazon with fast, free shipping, and you guys can get them available to you guys now. And also, if you have a custom design, you have a road sign maybe you saw on a mission or in one of your travels recently, you'd like to be turned into a shirt, they do custom designs as well. So go to BeWearables.co, that's BeWearables.co, excuse me, .co, to browse through the collection of uh, funny designs and order yours today. Life is funny. Wear it. That's bewearables.co. Thank you once again for joining us here on Locked On Cougars and making us your first listen of the day. want to encourage you guys to make sure you check out Locked On College Basketball. Everything you know about the college basketball scene in one place, March Madness is very quickly upon us, my friends. Hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players, and just get ready overall with regards to the national scene when it comes to college hoops. That's Locked On College Basketball available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Got two things on the football side of things I want to talk about today. And over the weekend, the XFL kicked off around the country. And the thing about this is spring football, it's a really interesting product because you're talking about a lot of guys who are trying to either uh, get their break in professional football, trying to get back into the NFL, hopefully, by showing well in a spring league like the XFL. But overall, they're trying to go out there and win games for the teams they play for. And we had two former Cougars uh, playing this past weekend for uh, different teams in the XFL. Tomasi Laulile playing for the Arlington Renegades, and he had maybe the finest defensive play of the weekend. And I mean that sincerely because he uh, read a screen pass absolutely to perfection, broke on it. The quarterback, to his everlasting dismay, uh, threw the pass ill-advised, and Tomasi Lale shows off the hands as a defensive end, uh, picks it out of the air, and rumbles back in. It was about 15, 20 yards 
for a touchdown. Absolutely phenomenal play for uh, Tomasi. Really cool to see him get that opportunity. He also finished the game uh, with one tackle and also that one interception and the touchdown. They're going to take on the Vegas Vipers this coming Saturday. It'll be uh, February 8th. Excuse me. February, yeah, fe- no, that's that's not right. That's not the right no, game. They actually played that game against the Vegas Vipers. Regardless, they play again this weekend. Trust me on that one. Now, T. John Karoma also played for the Seattle Sea Dragons in their game this weekend. They lost 22 to 18 to the DC Defenders on the road. Uh, he actually started along the offensive line. And the th- fun, fun thing about the XFL, if you did not check it out this past weekend, I would encourage you guys to do so. Uh, by the way, Arlington uh, did come back to beat the Vegas Vipers 22 to 20. So uh, Tomasi is one and O on the season, while uh, Tijon and the Sea Dragons dropped to O and one on the year. The fun part about this is there's eight teams in this league. So there's four games every weekend. They're doing double headers uh, most weekends. I think this weekend they actually have a Thursday, Friday, and then a Saturday slate, if I'm not mistaken. But the fun part is with this XFL is they've got a myriad of new rules. You can go for one, two, or three points. So essentially a nine point lead is no longer a two point uh, possession. You, 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 a two, a, yeah, uh, a two possession game is what I'm trying to say. You can get nine points in one possession. They're trying new things. They're having very uh, open conversations. You can hear players and coaches uh, talking on their headsets. Dean Blandino, who's the rules guy, uh, he's talking about how he's making decisions on instant replays live on air. There's some really unique things about the XFL. And I'm not trying to make you guys a disciple of the XFL, but I encourage you if you want to support these local guys, check out the product. And by the way, it's just it's football. It's live football. Maybe is it the best product out there? No, absolutely not. But there were three one-score games this past weekend of the four games played. So that's actually showing some pretty competitiveness early on. They have ten weeks, to, uh, excuse me, nine weeks to go in the regular season before the postseason. We'll see how it all shakes out. But best of luck to Tomasi as well as Tijon as they continue to play uh, this weekend. Now, also, we've been looking back at all of BYU's 155 uh, games of independence in their football history. We talked on our last episode about a disappointing 20 to 13 loss to the Utes, made it their fourth straight loss. We all know that the Losing streak ended up extending out to nine games. Very disappointing stuff. BYU was off to a one and two start in 2013. And it was a big, I remember this, a big to do uh, coming off those three games. All of them against power five opponents. If you recall, they, they lost to Virginia in a slop fest out there in Charlottesville. They crushed Texas and then they lose to Utah. Taysom Hill during that run had completed a grand total of 35.1% of his passes. And this is where the, the, the what do I call it? The, the discussion, the discourse about his inability to complete passes at a high enough clip to be a viable quarterback started to develop. Well, they welcomed in Middle Tennessee State on a Friday night to Provo and Taysom Hill actually reading the Associated Press story. It said this, Taysom Hill ignored all the criticism. He just went out and made plays for BYU with both his arm and his legs. He ended up uh, completing 14 of 19 passes in this game. Good numbers for Taysom Hill in this game. 177 yards, zero touchdowns against one interception, but he did run 18 times for 165 yards uh, with two touchdowns of his own. Michael Elisa added two touchdowns as well as BYU rumbled to 309 yards rushing on 55 carries as they absolutely crushed the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders 37-10. to 10. Now, this game, uh, it kind of gets lost with some of the other uh, conversations about this, but it showed in some ways this game what the rest of the 2013 season was going to feature with a guy like Taysom Hill at the helm of BYU's offense. Obviously, guys like Jamal Williams, he had gotten dinged up in that game against uh, against uh, Utah and was not able to play in this game against Middle Tennessee State. We saw him return, and he really started to turn it on as the season progressed. But this this game was kind of the preview for the rest of the year of what Taysom Hill is a true dual threat quarterback who is a, who is healthy, who can stay on the field for an entire season, what he was capable of. Now, if he was able to complete passes, maybe at a little higher clip at this point in his career, BYU probably would have had a better record in 2013, but this to middle Tennessee game kind of just, uh, it was just like that kind of that tantalizing taste of like, Ooh, what could be with this guy at quarterback? And we all know ultimately how his career played out, but we'll talk about these game by game. We'll talk tomorrow about yet another one of these contests uh, as they as we continue to roll through this. But these are the games. Middle Tennessee, it's a nothing burger in all reality because Middle Tennessee was one of those games, like the series with the Blue Raiders. Who really remembers vividly going to Murfreesboro for a road trip? I, for one, don't because I didn't make that trip. It was just had held zero interest for me. But they did have a big game the next week at Utah State. And obviously, they got back to two and two. So they're 500 on the season a month into it. Well, how are things going to play out as the as the season progressed? Well, we'll talk about Utah State and how Taysom continued to roll uh, for BYU 
on tomorrow's show. Now, I want to close up today's show with a look back at some of the other notes on BYU Sports. It's actually a very busy weekend in BYU Sports. A number of awards handed out. That's what I wanted to kind of highlight. Some of these athletes and these other BYU Sports in their BYU Athletic Department and what they did this past weekend that earned them various individual honors and team honors. We're going to run those down. We'll also talk about where you can find BYU Baseball in action. They opened their season with a 2-2 two and two, uh, record overall against Louisiana Tech. Well, they're back at it today. We'll talk about all of that in just a couple of minutes. Now, today's show is brought to you in part by our friends over at LinkedIn. And of course, oh, I pulled up the wrong overlay. There we go, LinkedIn. I have not bet FanDuel today, but LinkedIn is a small business owner or hiring manager. You know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That is why you guys need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences that will help you achieve your goals this year. The best part is they help you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs and targeting tools. They identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and then connect with you with them fast and for free. The best part is it makes it easy to screen and rate applicants based on your job qualifications all on one platform. Any of you out there, you know how important it is to have an all-in-one tool available to you. And that's what LinkedIn Jobs is for you guys. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus their leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show is also brought to you by friends over at UCCU. Love Where You Bank from UCCU is a promise made by a local not-for-profit financial institution that is dedicated to helping families improve their financial lives. UCCU delivers on that promise. They pioneer new technologies that make banking safer, easier, and more convenient. They create new products and services that add real value to their members. And the best part is they provide easy access to real local human beings who always give personal help or assistance. I can attest to this. I've talked to you guys about this before. I've been working with UCCU as my primary financial institution since I was a wee young lad. I was knee-high to grasshopper, as they say. I had, I think my first uh, savings account was like six years old, and I'm now 36, so three decades of working with these folks. They're absolutely awesome. There are many reasons to love banking with UCCU, and you don't have to take my word for it. Of course, the best way to know why you love banking at UCCU is to experience it for yourself, which is as simple as visiting uccu.com or stopping by any branch to get started today. One other uh, uh, just testimonial from Floyd K. of Nephi shares that UCCU is the best and what a banking institution should be about my friends they actually care about their members and they go above and beyond to get you what you really need they are the best amen floyd i completely agree with that that's uccu love where you bank thank you once again for joining us right here on locked on cougars and making us your first listen of the day you guys are the lifeblood of this program so thank you for your support as always you guys make this job uh and i call it a job it's not really a job it's kind of a labor of love i'm, I'm wearing one of my uh byu caps on today's show it's just it's fun to talk all things byu and by the way this uh hat uh, it's actually one of the ones from our good friends over at uh, Wooden Grail, uh, Alex Cress and the crew over there doing great stuff. This is actually one of their OGs, one of their originals, but they've got some really cool products. And if you're looking for something, this is not an ad, by the way. Uh, I have I really respect what Alex and his team at Wooden Grail have developed. You guys, if you want some really, really cool BYU gear, check out Wooden Grail. Like I said, they're not paying me to say that. I, I'm dead serious about it. But a couple of things before we go on today's show is I want to say congratulations uh, to Emma Calvert, uh, BYU sophomore forward. She was named the Collegiate Sports Communicators, or what they call the CSC Academic Alt District Team yesterday. Uh, to qualify for that honor, you must have completed one full calendar year at their current institution, be a sophomore academically and athletically, and also hold a 3.50 GPA or higher. Calvert is a pre-business major who holds a 3.69 GPA and has started 22 times of the 27 games BYU women's basketball started this year. Well, she's not alone on the basketball front with that, as BYU forward Fusini Traore also received that same honor from uh, the CSC Academic All-District uh, Selector Group. Uh, once again, uh, Traore, he is a native of B Bamako, Mali, is a business major and now is carrying a 3.68 GPA. And uh, Foos, if any of you have had an opportunity to speak with this young man or hear him speak, he is about as humble as they come. But the best part is he's a pretty smart cookie and he's really, really good on the basketball court. He's averaging team highs with 13.0 uh, points per game and 7.8 rebounds this year while shooting 60.7% from the field. Also shooting 75.7 percent from the free throw line. Foos has got the stroke, I feel like, to 
can make a three here and there. I'd like to see him release a little bit more, but congratulations to both of those athletes on their academic honors. Also need to give congratulations and props to BYU's uh, Dominic Jakalovich and the, as the WCC Men's Singles Player of the Week with fellow Cougars Jack Barnett and Mateo Varro taking home doubles honors of the week award doubles team uh, of the week award honors from the West coast conference in men's tennis. Very cool stuff to see them. They went two and zero in dual match play with wins over Weber state and St. Mary's last week. So congratulations to BYU men's tennis. Also congratulations to BYU women's softball. Uh, they swept the WCC pitcher and player of the week awards league announced Monday. Freshman case in Korth was pitcher of the week with senior third baseman, Martha Epinesa being named player of the week. BYU actually went five and zero this past week at the Littlewood classic in Tempe, Arizona. Up. Really good run for them down there in the uh, down in Arizona. They're going to be headed back out, uh, excuse me, to the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic this weekend with a double header Thursday against Missouri and Texas A&M. That'll start tomorrow once again. If you want to tune into that. Now, the final note for you guys is congratulations to the BYU men's and swim and dive team that captured their MPSF championship for the third straight year this year. So, congratulations to men's swim and dive. The women's team finished third uh, at the uh, opportunities with the dive teams. Uh, first team. Pl- First uh, team, blah, first place finishes by the dive teams as well as top teams in the swim times help BYU men's swim and dive uh, win their third MPSF conference championship in their third the last three years with a total of 830 points. Women scored 592 points to finish in third place. Congratulations to both of those teams. And now finally, BYU uh, men's baseball had a pretty good opening week. The bats came alive for the Bat Cats. Uh, they won. They won their first game 10-1 over Louisiana Tech. Lost the Slugfest eight to six. Then won eight two on Saturday. And then in their uh, series finale Monday, they lost ten two to Louisiana Tech. Well, they have no time to rest. Really, they only got one day off. They're back in action today as they take on the Louisiana Raging Cajuns uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana, at ML uh, Moore Field at Russo Park. Uh, the first game will start at five o'clock Mountain Time. It will be on BYU. Radio 107.9 FM. If you want to tune in to hear the call of that game, it's a four game set starting today, going through Saturday with one game each day uh, through the weekend. But best of luck to BYU men's baseball. Your opportunity to see them, by the way, the Bat Cats at home comes next week as their first, uh, excuse me, not this is their first home game, will be uh, March 2nd as they take on Omaha at Miller Park. But they're out on the road this week. Best of luck to them against the Red Cajuns. Hopefully, their hot bats they had in Louisiana will translate as they head over to uh to face off against the raging Cajuns. By the way, uh, these teams that they're playing, Louisiana Tech, uh, Lafayette, they're very good baseball programs. I know that they're quote unquote G5 schools, but they are warm weather baseball powerhouses in, in many respects. So it's a really really good opening slate for BYU to face these teams and best of luck to them as once again as they take head to Lafayette uh this evening to kick things off there. All right. So there you go. You're up to speed on everything going on with BYU sports. I felt like I needed, with all the awards being handed out, I figured I'd take a minute, uh, talk about those. I know we don't necessarily dig into those a ton, but the good news is there's good things happening. Uh, good things happening across the board for BYU athletics and many of the sports. And I know that football and basketball kind of uh, take the lion's share, at least the, the vast majority of our time here on this podcast. But every now and again, we can give a little bit of a of, of a throw a bone, I guess you should say, to the BYU Athletics Department and show off uh, what some of these other athletes are doing that may not necessarily register uh, to, to the lay fan on an everyday basis. All right, that'll do it for us. Big thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. I cannot thank you guys enough once again for your support of the podcast. Please go make your second listen our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Josh Neighbors does a great job getting you up to speed on everything going on with the Big 12 conference, conference realignment, quarterback battle, spring ball, all that. So by the way, we're going to start digging into spring ball. We're just over a week away from BYU opening up spring ball. We'll dig into that some as uh, this week progresses and on into next week, getting you ready for that. Stay tuned all week long, right here on Locked on Cougars. See ya.